Well, kia ora everyone. Our passage for today picks up where Luke last left off in Luke 24. The disciples are in lockdown in their bubble. Their revolution of love has been extinguished quickly and brutally, and they were holding up in a house scared for their lives. Their hearts were filled with joy when Jesus suddenly appeared in their midst, saying, Peace be with you. Jesus then told them that he was going on, but that they should stay in the city until they were clothed with power from on high. So we see about 50 days later in Acts 2, those same disciples are still waiting in the city for this new power. They've been there this 50 days, not too dissimilar to us, and then something miraculous happens. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind comes from heaven and fills the whole house where they were sitting, and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, and it says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And it must have been amazing to sense that same Spirit of Jesus come and dwell upon them and within them. Uh, I can remember at the age of 13 when I first encountered the Holy Spirit in a similar way. Suddenly this God, who I related to mostly as a historical figure in the pages of the Bible, became a present and powerful reality in my life. And it was incredible. And I saw miracles. I saw legs grow and, and I had visions and, and an incredible sensation. I felt something like electricity course through my whole body. And I began to speak in these same tongues that the disciples did. And, and mostly this resulted in a deeper, a, a deepening of my relationship with Jesus and a bigger understanding of who God is. But, but there was something I missed in the midst of it. See, as I was feeling and experiencing this new and powerful presence of God, I made the mistake of thinking that the point was the feeling. My, my teenage brain thought that the Holy Spirit had come just to make me more joyful. And that was partly true. Joy is a part of it, but there was so much more. And there are three interesting things I think we see when the Holy Spirit comes on the disciples in this passage from Acts 2. Firstly, it says that a crowd gathered, and that crowd was from all over the place. They were Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamians, Judeans, Cappadocians. Jesus said, you know, in John 12, 32, that when he was lifted up, the, the, he would draw all people to him. And so we see that in this moment in Acts 2, that a true move of Jesus and a true move of the Holy Spirit can never be contained to our little group. It can never be just about our little church, and it can never be just about our own feelings. This encounter with the Holy Spirit immediately caused a crowd of 3,000 to gather, and those 3,000 came to know Jesus. So firstly, I see in here, when it's a true Holy Spirit movement, it draws people who don't know Jesus to Jesus. Now, secondly, we hear in this passage that the disciples spoke in these new tongues, these heavenly languages. And when this happened, all those people from different cultures, creeds, and backgrounds were suddenly able to hear the disciples as if it was their own language. And that's because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of unity. And where she goes, there will be an uncommon, an, an uncommon unity that draws people together, which is not about left or right, conservative or liberal. It's not about all these terminologies or these allegiances and alliances that come and go. It's a deeper unity. So the second thing we see in this passage is when it is a true Holy Spirit movement that we will find an unusual unity together despite our differences. And finally in this passage we see that the Spirit made the disciples very strange to others. Some were claiming that they were getting drunk in the middle of the morning. Others thought they had lost their minds. The crowd didn't gather because the disciples were normal. The crowd gathered because the Holy Spirit was making them a holy, peculiar, and set-apart people who were living a different kind of way to the powers of the world around them. So when it's a true Holy Spirit movement, we are being made a holy or a peculiar people to proclaim the truth about Christ. When it's a truly Holy Spirit movement, we are made holy, we are made strange, and our peculiarity draws people to Christ. You know, in John 14, 26, it says the Holy Spirit is called the Comforter and the Counselor. And, and yes, she is that, but she is also the Spirit that sends us out to gather the lost sheep, 
to be deeply unified with them and with one another and to become a peculiar and set apart people together. So let's, let's remember as we come towards this day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit is never just for us and for our bubble, but for a hurting world that needs the good news of Jesus desperately.